Hello and welcome to another episode of Myths and Stories, a Destiny 2 lore podcast. Uh, today we are going through a lore book that we technically shouldn't have access to all the pages of, but a large we hack the system. <laughs> a large majority of the people in the game do. Uh, and that is the Dynasty lore book. Uh, however, even though it's kind of cheating because the third one isn't officially out according to the API, though you could get it just by rerunning the the act quests on multiple characters. Or, or be like us and hack the system. Yeah, that's what happened. Uh, <laughs> we totally didn't like just discover earlier today that, oh, this third <laughs> this third chapter isn't supposed to be released yet. Yeah. Uh, but it will be launching with the beginning of Act 3, which will be the same day this episode comes out. So... Are we uh, that close to Act 3? Act 3 is the 27th, I do believe. Holy shit. Where does time go, man? I know. It's crazy. But, uh, but yeah, so even though we're recording this at a time where, you know, technically it's, you know, spoilers, I... Nah, it won't be by the time it comes out. Yeah. 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 Just like government work. It's close enough. <laughs> Yep. Take this from a, an ex-government employee. <laughs> that is a philosophy I've taken way too many times. Yeah. Works in horseshoes and hand grenades. Uh, and thermonuclear devices. Hey, yeah. Uh, but uh, the Dynasty lore book is a really interesting one. Uh, and it does not talk primarily about anything that we have experienced in-game. Uh, it is a discussion focused mainly around a race of peoples uh, that are outside the solar system that, based on other lore cards, met their end well before uh, the collapse or any of that happened, well before probably even the Traveler was visiting the solar system. Yeah, this, this is a... This is a... I've poked my head into this one a few times and like read like a line here or there. Like I haven't fully read the whole thing, but it's it from the bits and pieces that I have gathered. This is this is going to be a neat one. This is going to be a fun one. Yeah. Uh, now, before we dive into the Dynasty book, there's actually some supplemental material that we're going to read first that comes to us from D1 and then another chapter from D2 to kind of set up some prior knowledge about these peoples uh, before we dive into the book that kind of focuses on them. I, as a one small aside, I've had a couple people reach out and let me know that uh, there's been some uh, requests for the volume overall of the podcast to be raised. I, Last episode was the first one where I made some changes to hopefully address that. Uh, this one as well. So if, you know, I guess just let me know if if it seems like things are better for you or if there's still some tweaking needed. Uh, but hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll be good. Uh, Usually Myth has to bring my volume down. Like Myth and everyone does. Like especially with the rating. I get too excited. I get too loud. <laughs> so that's, that's partly my fault that Myth has had to keep the volume at a lower level just to so it matches his level wow. there's a lot of moving parts i won't you know this is true i won't lay blame on one particular audio track that may happen to be named zor's audio uh, i'm telling you man i sit here i'm watching i i you, i mean you know you know how when i started to get my new setup and everything kind of dialed in how i was watching i was able to actually watch the the when we swapped from doing a uh uh um was like a Discord bot yep. uh, chat recorder to local recordings, and I was actually able to watch my my audio appear on the screen, and I would just watch the clipping, at the, like I, it would just be one giant bar. And I'm like, <laughs> well, that's probably not normal, is it? Yeah. So. So yeah. Hopefully, this one will be uh, this and the last are a little more uh, evened out as far as audio and understandable. If there's still issues, let me know. Uh, and it was only a few people, but. We want to try and make sure that as many people as possible can enjoy. Uh, yeah. But without further ado, we are going to start all the way back in the Taken King in the Book of Sorrow. 
uh, specifically verse 3-3, three, three, uh, titled Fire Without Fuel. And the reason we're going over this, as well as our the next lore reading after it, before we get into the book, is that both of these lore readings are in regards to a race of peoples called the Kyugu. At least I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. I uh, in their names, man. I know. It's Q-U-G-U. So, you know, you can make your best guess. But I'm going to go with Kyugu for now. I And, you know, all of this is going to be about them. So, the first chapter, Fire Without Fuel, Book of Sorrow. Uh, from the Hive's point of view, this is how they describe the Kyugu and their kind of run-in with them. Uh, told from, I think, the perspective of Oryx in this case. Uh, but regardless, goes like this. I killed my sister today. She came to this star to oversee the extermination of all life here. The Kyugu are a strong power, and their fleets protect four nearby stars. As herd animals, they are loyal and stubborn, but they do show grace. For millions of years of evolution, the Kyugu have been infected by a virus so insidious that it wrote itself into their genome. The virus compels them to offer their limbs for amputation by enormous sessile jaw beasts. They venerate these beasts and treat them as gods. The virus converts Kyugu cells into eggs from which strange crawling things pupate to live within the jaw beast gut. In turn, the jaw beast extrudes sweet nectar for the Kyugu to drink, and they have brilliant visions. Savathun and her broods have liberated the Kyugu from jaw beasts, and indeed from existence. But as they chased the Kyugu Ark ships, I stopped in to vaporize my sister's warship and a few of her underlings. I want to dwell on the ruins a while, and punish Savathun for failing to guard her flank. They are like us, these Kyugu. Bound in symbiosis, I feel joy and sorrow. I feel them as titanic things because I am larger than my body. My mind is now a cosmos of its own. I know more joy and more anguish than the entire Kyugu race could ever experience. Sorrow because we have killed so much, eighteen species this century alone, and joy for the same reason. Joy that we have put down these blights, scoured them away, and left the universe clean, ready to move towards its final shape. We are a wind of progress, ripping parasites from the material world, for if they were not parasites, we would be unable to kill them, and they would still exist. And what is that final shape? It is a fire without fuel, burning forever, killing death, asking a question that is its own answer, entirely itself. That is what we must become. My worm grows fat and hungry, and I feed it with whole worlds. My astronomers tell me they can sense the deep itself, and that we are conquering our way towards it. I think joy and sorrow will be the same thing soon, like love and death. And that's the end of the Book of Sorrow page. Very, very philosophical there at the end. Yeah. Uh, no, I, 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 
when you first started describing them, I, I really did think of them as as a you know a parasitic type uh, insectoid creature. But I'm starting to see it as more like like the more you get through that reading, the more you realize it is a it is very much a symbiotic. Like the one offers it its limbs up for the other for a to um, reproduce and create more eggs and b get sustenance from. Uh, well, a it's not sustenance, but uh, uh, mind altering <laughs> yeah. drugs. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how healthy of a relationship that is, but it's something. Uh, but yeah, so, I, I mean, a very large uh, um, uh, population, though, to be in charge of, you know, their fleets guard four stars. I mean, that's four whole solar systems. Right. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a large chunk of space. Like, our own solar system is... You know, a lot of people in the grand scheme of things think, oh, you know, our our little sector of space, our little solar system is very small. But it, it truly is a, a very big space. Like, it's just the entirety of the universe is much bigger. So, therefore, by comparison, it looks small. But, uh, no, like, to be in charge, to be, you know, watching over four whole star systems, that's that's a really good size um, uh, uh, species and and. and obviously an, an advanced species to be able to have, you know, interstellar travel and stuff like that. Right. So, um, yeah, no, I, I didn't realize this existed all the way back in D1. Yeah. They, there wasn't anything else about this particular race, uh, outside of this one little section of the book of sorrow. They were, you know, the footnote of a conquest by the hive, you know, one of many, well, and for it to be in the Book of Sorrow, it, it's funny because, like, I, I know we did the Book of Sorrow, but that was like, that was so long ago. <laughs> Literal like, you know, years. My <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, I obviously I'd have to go back and listen to that one and, and hear my own thoughts on on what I thought of it at the time. But uh, no, with it being in the Book of Sorrow, like this is this is the war path of the hive. This was the the billion year uh, march uh, from fundament to soul, and so like. Uh, like what you were saying before, like this was clearly, you know, pre collapse, pre pre traveler even getting here. Like this was this was very long ago. Yeah. Uh long, long time ago that the hive came across these this race and, you know, exterminated them by yeah. their telling yeah. at least. And I do I do like I do like the the quick like hive bit in there. I, I say quick, I mean obviously Book of Sorrow, it's centered around hive, so it's gonna be in there. But like I do like the bit about Oryx and just coming through and be like, yeah, I killed my sister. <laughs> yeah. Uh, decimated her troops uh, just to show her, hey, watch your uh, right flank there. Don't uh, don't go unguarded. He does it. So, he does it. He does it so nonchalantly in this passage here. It, it feel it feels so just like, yeah, I did that. Watch yourself. And then they they all just like accept it. Well, and and say kind of echoing what what is said at the end there. You know, I. Uh joy and sorrow will be the same like love and death to the hive or, or to the, the, you know, sisters at least like that killing each other was an expression of love. Yep. You yep. know, cause it showed that they were stronger. It showed that they were, they were, uh, what you, per- perpetuating the sword logic. Like yeah. they were showing that they were, yep. they were making it prop, prop gaining, I guess would be perpetuating. Yeah. Same word. Uh, yeah, like they were showing that they were that they were doing what they what they were taught to do, and and the other thing too in this whole thing, the final shape is mentioned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that kind of that kind of threw me off for a second. I was like, wait a second, holy shit! Like this thing, like dude, these signs for this game have been rooted all the way back in the beginning. Like, I mean, you're talking take this is stuff that dropped with Taken King, so this is like a year out from launch, from original D1 launch, like. That's that to me is kind of mind blowing. This this journey really has been intertwined and 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 woven into every little bit of of destiny. And for it to be mentioned, for it to for the final shape to be mentioned here, like that does tell us a, a lot of things. Like obviously they got that rhetoric from the witness. Like right. anything that is that is that that has like the final shape brand on it, you know, is something that the witness wants. That that is I. I I used to, again, now this is a lot of association stuff, like, used to associate the witness is the winner. We now know that's not true. Used to associate, like, salvation with deep. That's kind of not true. I'm starting to lean more in that salvation is the the witness 
side of things, final shape. You just think, hey, that's all darkness. That's all winnower. No, that's that's the witness now. So it's it's interesting to see these points here and to kind of like pick them apart and go, oh, so this is something that an entity that was just upset with how its interaction with light and dark went is is and and you know then deemed itself the 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 not ender of all things but like the the i'm trying to think what the what words the witness used like like he wanted he the purpose for the pur- purpose purpose of for <laughs> i'm making a ball sorts word today myth uh the person that gives everything purpose yeah um so that that like that that's what the witness wanted and and that was like his end goal and so to like to see the final shape mentioned here, like he was already putting those plants in motion way, 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 way back. So yes. again, uh, uh, showing also the age of the witness, like we already knew the, the witness and its people were ancient because of how long that, that, that scene with Akka shows that like they were there for eons. Like it, he is really, 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 really old. Yes. <laughs> True. So, yeah likely the oldest thing in the universe other than the traveler I'm, i am really starting to believe that i am truly starting to think that the witnesses precursor people were the first beings the first intelligible beings outside of the vex like the the vex obviously like there's kind of like this weird thing that's happening on the sidelines yeah but like clear they they have been here since before time they they even it's even described I'm trying to remember which books it was in. Was it in the unveiling that they were described as being here before time? Yeah. Uh, it, it it didn't name drop the Vex specifically, but it talked about the pattern. Uh, right. And that the pattern kind of like fell from, you know, fell from whatever realm the Gardener and Winnower were in into this universe. And it, it you know, kind of existed outside of this universe uh, prior to that is the idea. Yep. Uh, and then it fell in and, you know, found found something to hold on to and, and started building. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. So, like, it, those the, the age of those two entities, uh, again, I you know me, I love anything in, that has to do with time. So, when we start talking to history and stuff like that, I love that stuff. So, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, this was, this was an interesting entry. Yeah. So... Uh, with this entry, we see from the hive's point of view, they're like, "This is a symbiosis." This, but it is like this this virus, this infection, and uh, it's it's forcing them to give up limbs just you know to see these visions is their description of it. However, in the next reading, which came to us with Lightfall, yes, it's been that long since the Kyugu were mentioned again. Jesus. Uh, in the lore book in Spiral, which we did another episode that was all about in Spiral, uh, there is a lore entry titled The Art of Symbiosis that is a Kyugu, presumably, it kind of giving us a window into how they view what it is they get out of this uh, this symbiosis and interestingly enough it is maybe much more than like you know a psychedelic drug or something i uh, i hope so because it otherwise it feels <laughs> feels dirty it feels <laughs> wrong <laughs> well let's say we will see how they describe it and you can make your own opinion there uh, so this is in Spiral, Art of Symbiosis, and it goes like this. A trance imagining of darkness sweet like honey, a life refracted through another's eyes like splintered light. It leaves behind an imperfectly translated data fragment to mark its passing. And that fragment reads... Anyway, beloved sibling, if you want to catch me while I'm still wearing this body, you'll need to come home in the next couple of cycles. I don't mind if you'd prefer to wait until I'm down by the untranslatable among our ancestors, but you might get a different sort of chat. I'm excited about it, genuinely. 
I still hear from our parents, from our great parents, distantly in my night trances. And there are those nectar-made moments, you know the ones, when you turn your thoughts to the darkness and just listen. And the long sum of Kugu history, graven there, reflects dark, comforting advice. I have lived out my life with the tenebrous warmth of our ancestors over me like a cloak between us and nothingness. It's different. It's distant. I've drunk of the nectar a few times in the last cycles, and I touch briefly that concurrence of us all and more and more. I think it's time to be a part of it. I want to know the truths our ancestors keep close, and it is my turn to guide the future's children. I know we argued the last time we spoke about it. You thought I was moving too fast toward aging metamorphosis, but really, I just think you've been away from home too long. Don't Take it as my urging to get on with the next stage of your life. Just take it as... as that I miss you. Funny, isn't it? How can you miss someone when you know they're always in the dark? I close my eyes, and in the warm nest hide of sleep, I know you are real and happy, and out there on some other part of the world, far from the river, far from the untranslatable where our ancestors exist together. But it isn't the same as having you near, knowing your truth is under the same stars, being able to simply turn my head and ask for your opinion. Dear sibling, come home. Live in my house and let me exist close to you again whether in this shape or the new one I will take on. I will not be the same, but which of us ever is? You are not the same as you were as a child, either. No matter the form of existence, I will love you. And that's the end of that one. You said this was uh, another one that we had done? We had covered this one? Yeah, we have covered the Inspiral book. Man, I my brain memory section sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another one I have to go back and listen to my original thoughts on this. But uh, again, putting it in the context of what we're doing it here, um, the one interesting thing that sticks out to me is this seems like a a, a race that uh, I don't want to say worship darkness, but definitely had darkness um, influence power. Yeah, connection. Uh, I I don't I don't know what to what to describe it as here, but I mean, a lot of it kind of makes sense. I I'm starting to think this. You know, this I'll put this in quotations. Psychedelic drug <laughs> uh, from the that they got from the symbiosis. I think is more of a like trip down memory lane. Like it, this is this is more of a like a darkness connection. And again, knowing that darkness is connected with the, the psyche, the, the consciousness, the uh, memory, a, a lot of times um, that makes sense. Like that, that just feels logical there. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm curious. It's, it's kind of a two part curiosity. One, were they actual users of darkness? And if so, why did the hive come and wipe them out? Like, yeah, I'm, like there's there's a there's a few things that can be dove into there, and then the other part is like, were these a psychic oriented race like the scions? Like, were they more uh, adept into psychic abilities and stuff? Um, and if so, like, again, like what's the connection here with that and darkness, and what's what's going on there? Yeah, um, so. Before reading Dynasty, before we we jump into the Dynasty portion, I think just with the knowledge we have from these two readings, there's a couple of things that we can make guesses at. Maybe it will be proven right. Maybe we won't. But I take it to be that either this, you know, nectar uh, is 
you know, some it has some kind of innate darkness in it that causes them to hallucinate memories. Sure. Uh, or, and I think this is maybe what's being inferred here, whether it's correct or not, I don't know. Uh, it almost sounds like they see this nectar as a way to establish a connection to like a different plane of existence. And something like the assist, uh, assistant, the assistant. Plan. No. <laughs> that's Asher Mir's that's, throne world. <laughs> that's, 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 God damn it. You're, you are in my head, buddy. Uh, yeah, no, the uh, ascendant plane is what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think they're connecting to the ascendant plane, but something similar, something similar. where, yeah, yeah, yeah. where the, the consciousnesses of their ancestors uh exist like Live? yeah exist. Our, That's a it, it's word. it's almost i i hesitate to say that they're connecting to the veil because as far as we are aware the veil would still be in the ownership of the witness at this point i right. uh, but because he didn't drop it until he got to the right um to the soul system but something similar but it's still a chorus and conductor style thing you think well and that i don't a think single, so a single a single um well, no, because they talk about it as a realm. Like it, it, it doesn't seem like it's. It, they're not like they're not like jacking into the matrix or something like that. They're not plugging into the into the into the cloud arc, and now there's you know, accessing it via nodes or anything like that, or or you know, uploading themselves to a, to one system or anything. It's just a a space where consciousness exists. Yeah, though I think it wouldn't be inaccurate to think of it as a operating similarly to the cloud arc, just rather than like technologically accessed it's accessed via quite literally opening your mind and like making a connection sure. via a direct connection via dark energy sure i uh, but it, it seems to imply that there is this this floating realm where like for lack of a better term all of the consciousnesses all of the souls all of the spirits whatever you want to call it of their previous generations still exist and are accessible and can like yeah. hold conversations to some degree. Yeah. Uh, and you know, this letter seems to be implying that this is a member of this race that is going to, it sounds like choose to move on and like abandon the mortal coil to join in whatever that place is. Yeah. Now, as to why the hive perhaps goaded on by the witness, perhaps not, I uh, would see another race using the dark and be like, we need to wipe them out. There could be a couple things there. It, it could just be the hive are in conquest mode and they don't understand what's happening uh, or, or sure. care to understand. They, they just see... They see sword logic and they're like, must conquer. Yeah. Full stop. Uh, It could be that the witness has seen these people and uh, has either, you know, in in its own way made a bid for them to join him and they refused. Or uh, perhaps it sees their use of the dark as like, well, that's not how you should use it. Kind of, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Because, because again, thinking of it in terms of what the way the the way the witness is described is thinking is of, um, he wants to give purpose. So right. if he sees something that doesn't align with what he thinks the purpose is or should be, it it's an abomination. And therefore, should be done away with. Yeah, and it's I don't think he necessarily cares if it's a con- well clearly because he his race has used both prior to the witness and post witness he was using both to try and finalize everything uh yeah. so as much as like at a at a you know as much as the hive are very like dark good light bad i don't think the witness necessarily sees it that way he's more just like which tool gets me to my end result uh, i don't know why i never put two and two together until that exact moment that you just said that the witness does and can wield light and dark yeah is the only other entity in all of soul in all of the universe that we know of that we're aware of that does both at the same time. Yeah. 
That's just that was that was just a other than us mind blowing. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. The the only other um known entity in this universe mm-hmm. um outside of humanity that can and does wield both at the same time. Because like again, the hive is that that awkward one, like Yes, they they were darkness, and then like Savathun's brood, the lucid brood, like now they wield the light, but they they can't do both. Like Lazaku doesn't come over and be like, "Hey, I'm going to use stasis now." Right. So yeah, that's a I don't I don't know why that that point to me is just it it, it stuck out. Yeah, I don't know why. No, so I uh, we get a little a little inside look at the Kugu see this as a very like spiritual thing. Uh, sure. And it appears that the nectar, the drinking of the nectar is what, you know, allows them to make that connection to their ancestors in whatever way they exist. Uh, so a symbiosis, but not necessarily a like symbiosis where they get something they need to live out of it, perhaps. But it is a very like cultural necessity all the same. Sure. Well, I guess that's the big thing to think of it as symbiosis versus parasitic. Parasitic, one is actively feeding off the other for benefit, sustenance, positiveness, whatever. And the other one is actively being um, driven down, uh, whether it be physically, psychologically, whatever. Whereas symbiosis is both sides are, are – it's like a codependency. It's each each one is, is – um, gaining something from the the use of the other yeah yeah so with those little prerequisites out of the way we're going to dive into the dynasty lore book proper Uh, so this one uh, all of these entries are very long just as a heads up uh we're likely going to take some breaks in you know amongst them uh so yeah it's not there's technically only three entries. There's technically only three chapters. They are just large chapters. <laughs> they chunky. Uh so with that in mind, we're gonna start on chapter one, which is titled A Step Leads, A Step Follows. And it goes like this. And the name Tequal fades from focus. Red anticipation runs into dripping memory as the unknown sprawl of the future stands endless and dark. Moments before jaws close, reality confronts the mind. Reason pleads with the body, every nerve screaming too late to retreat from viral attraction. Deterministic instinct Forces Kyugu to jaw beast. Severed, paid, reformed in the belly of sacrifice, repaid. Drink deep the nectar and recite. All change is pain. There's a little section break. Gloom shades a great mountain. Rigid, cut against the sky. Flood plains engulf the mountain shadow to every horizon. Coral forests dotted by mossy patches root into red sands and maize-streaked stone. Geothermic silt-rich shallows steep aromatic lichen and flow through subterranean channels that erode fountains until the surface above falls into slithering groves across the planet set. Within a sunken valley, at the mountain's base, a kugu slumps, dying. Cephalopod frame atop bipedal inverted legs, cloaked in a flowing mane of tendril-like tentacles, With a single forelimb reaching from their chest, the deep black eyes infer connection, but primal, lost, and alone. Te Juna cries out alone. Extinguishment, the old fear, shared burden. Their legs have no strength left, but something in the blood compels them forward into the maw 
of an enormous mollusk beast. The great jaw snap shut. A mane of tentacles limply grope and then lay still. Remains into the shallows. Life leaves the flesh and gathers again. It splinters and fractures and then melds, entwines, decomposes and gestates a death grove awakening. Time passes and Te Junas rot seeds the grove that drinks from the dark pools beneath the mountain. Five rise from the silt and shallow. Their existence burns bright for a time and then dims. Five return in frailty to the death grove, to the mollusk beast, compelled into its jaws. Their flesh churns to nectar, and they seed the grove anew. A dozen worlds persistently circle a blazing white star. Kyugu herds stride the open floodplain, feed basking the starlight of Setar. Their migrations find the coral edge that falls into the sea. Direction is sought. Main limbs are offered in ritual symbiosis to the great mollusk of the mountain, a defied jaw beast. Vision bringing nectar is collected, fermented, and imbibed. Seeded death groves saturate with it. The line of the Kyugu people carves valleys deep into set. Their existence resonates across time, through consciousness, in voice, and actioned flesh. I'm going to pause for a moment. I was just about to ask for a pause. Uh, this is this is this is really cool. The, I, I'm taking a lot of this as like this is the beginning. Like this, yeah. is, this is how this species like started. Like uh, the the take to call take wall. God, I, I you have such a better way of like coming up with a pronunciation for these. I am I I feel like a. a Red dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, just guessing. <laughs> I know, I know, we're all just guessing at these, but I feel, I feel, I, I don't know, because um, uh, I'm like looking at it, it was like Tay Juna cries out. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like okay, all right, Zor, you're being a dumbass. Like, <laughs> chill out. Um, so yeah, no, it, this is really cool. So this is, it seems, again, from the, at least from this reading, that Takal was like the first and it was yeah. this i mean the description of this thing is freaky cephalopod frame so and correct me if i'm wrong cephalopod is like a crab right like that's like a uh a cephalopod squid i want to say which one am I thinking squid of? but let me double check yes thank squid. you okay um what's a what's a crab then uh crustacean anyway, is a crab crustacean yeah. that's what i was thinking um or decapod. Can't expect a demigod to beat a decapod. That's a Moana thing. Anyway, <laughs> so cephalopod. So you have a squid-like frame atop bipedal inverted legs. So that's like uh, like backwards bending legs. Like the knees, yeah. instead of bending forward, they bend backwards. Yeah. Like a, uh, a dog or a horse or, you know. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's still just an odd like image in oh, my it mind. Is. Like a, it very a, much a is. A squid on, on bipedal legs. Like... What the hell? But then it keeps going. Uh, cloaked in a flowing mane of ten- tendril-like tentacles. So uh, on its back, across its back, it has a mane, like like a like a, a horse or a lion or something like that, uh, of just tentacles. Yeah. But it, it's not it's not just on its back. It's cloaked. Like, it's everywhere. Like, this mane is, like, these tentacles are popping out from all over this thing. And it just has a single arm coming right out of the middle of the chest. Yep. This is a weird looking <laughs> creature, man. It is. This is a weird looking creature. Um, just deep black eyes, like that's it. Like it, this is an odd looking creature. And 
again, this describes kind of like the first uh, the first action that kind of starts the symbiosis, right? Like it this this thing. Now it's interesting here because like up top it, it says to call, but then like down here it says uh, to to Juna. Um, God, you're so much better at that. Uh, so what I'm curious of that little break that happened there, right? Like it says, drink deep the nectar and recite all changes pain. There's like dot, dot, dot break. And then it dot, 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 it like comes back in gloom shades, a great mountain. So it's, I'm curious if it's like to call is starting to have a vision or, or start, starting to have something in the first part. And then it's kind of like a, a reversal of time. And we're seeing backwards in time to the first. And the first was actually like Tejuna yeah. was this this single cephalopod this dying cephalopod um or this dying kogu Kogu. damn it (laughs) (laughs) this is hard uh but then like again describing how this is happening like it 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 this thing this creature you know willingly gives it stuff itself up the 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 jaw beast you know digests it the the thing decomposes and five uh rise from the silt so again it reproduces it, it it's it is a it's an odd way of reproducing um i won't beat around the bush on that one haha uh but it's this is really really cool to see this like happening throughout this this entry here and of course they then it kind of like it 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 Clearly, there's like time jumps happening because it's like yeah. you know, a dozen worlds happen and this that and then, you know they continue to to carve out their way of life. It's like it it was it literally is like this was the first being and now there are many and it's just it's that's so cool um, to see that happening throughout this this little first part of the century. Yeah, it, it is it is really neat and I I think um, the way that I was reading uh, the structure I think uh, so Tequal I think is the one that like has just given their arm to the yep. jaw beast. And it, then it says, drink deep the nectar and recite all changes pain. I'm guessing that's some kind of like mantra for this ceremony sure. or whatever. Yep. This, this has a lot of this, this, the way that this is being described too. Um, I, I guess the, the ceremony side of it feels very native American to me. I don't know why. Yeah. But I mean, it, it, it feels yeah. very like, you know, there's a, there's, there's a, there's a connection there. And then it, reconnecting with ancestors type thing like that's that's what this this feels like to me um yeah no i i I could at a very base level i could see that you know no personally knowing very little about any of those cultures i right but but it does like you know maybe stereotypically you think of like connection to the land connection to ancestor spirits that kind of thing i it, it does generally give you the idea of like native american or like uh you know, Gaelic Druidic or, you know, those, those yeah, kinds yeah. of things. Yep. Uh, so no, my, my head was in the same place for sure. I, uh, and I, I think though they, you know, to is drinking the nectar, reciting the mantra. And I think the vision they are being given based on the previous one, where it's like, you know, talking to the ancestors, I think maybe the vision they're getting is here's your ancestry all the way from the beginning. I mean, that's a long, that's a long way back. Like to, to call could just be like, Hey, I just want to talk to granddad. Uh, right. And the, the beast is like, I will show you the beginning. And they're like, wait, 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 no, no, no. We don't have to go through the whole textbook. Yeah. I just need like the previous chapter. I missed last night's homework. And I just, <laughs> yeah. That's all I need. And he's like, no, you will start from chapter one, the prologue you will start from. And he's like, ah, fine. Uh, yeah. It's like, look, grandpa was a cool guy. I would totally be down to talk to him again. Great grandpa was a bastard. Can we just skip him, yeah. please? Can <laughs> like, we just skip that part? Can we skip chapter three? Like, I don't need to see chapter three. Like, yeah. that's... Yeah. Uh, but no. So, yeah, I, I think it is, like, like you said, either this is the vision being given or it's, you know, doing it for us, the audience, uh, that, like, this is where it started. Uh, and so we've seen this kind of pattern has emerged of like, they, you know, from this first, they give themselves up uh, and it creates the nectar, which uh, is then like collected and fermented uh, and then imbibed is, is drank. Uh, Come on. This is, this is, <laughs> this is my <mild> trucks. <laughs> Anytime you bring the word fermented in, 
You, <laughs> like that's it. That's, uh, look, if that's my if you thing. could pour me a glass of scotch good enough that it like connected my mind to some outer consciousness, I'll give you that one. Yeah, <laughs> that's some that's some pretty cool shit. <laughs> not like, gonna lie. Like okay. <laughs> Um, that is that is pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. That that's yeah yeah. But so the, the this whole culture evolved around this this thing. I uh, and so it picks up and continues. The children of their children would return to the coral edge to swim in the depths and pry submerged jaw beasts to the surface. These holy beasts are given new roosts beneath the mountain. Many cycles pass. A village of salt stone, lichen, and coral shelters the herd. In time, many dot the shallows around the mountain. The death grove churns generations in the silt, and new groves take shape, filling the shadows for miles. Groves anchor villages. Villages spiral into cities that join the mountain to the sea and reach high to seed bodies in the sky. Kugu voices echo in unity across a shared dream of existence, a haven from fear and loneliness, a horizon of communal ambition. Memories and concepts, as distant reference, as echoed warning, as guided hand, ever sharpening the whole, living, active reincarnation. And now, Tequal, this expression of the cycle, one of three, one who has seen the skies colored by four stars, the insight of nectar many times, and the perils of seventy years. One who now sees the line of their decency, of their descendancy, excuse me, back to its inception. The lives of Tequali ancestors entwined and present before them. Above the stars are absent, a hollow sky. Tequal concentrates on the breadth of the Kugu line, listens to their voices, seeks guidance. In their deepest dreaming moments, Tequal would experience their knowledge, feel their gentle pull or push, as if all action had been building to and from their decisions. The herd surrounds them. They stride across the floodplain together. They wriggle through sea rock coves and run the paths of their evolution together. The herd halts under a starless sky. Tequal stops but a few paces out of step. So sudden is the loss of momentum, and looks back, draws faces known to them forward, and listens. The herd screams in silence, their mouths agape in that old extinguishing fear. Tequal turns from the line of their ancestors and looks to the starless sky. The flood plains fall away into cliff and void, the starless nothing dripping down to overtake the horizon. And there, at the pointed tip of the Kugu line, Tequal sees an end, a precipice of silence, a great yawning tear in the sky of nothing, looming over the mountain. An omen, split to swallow them all. A vision of purpose, the culmination of many cycles, a pivotal step. Now we're going to pause there again. So 
not only is Tikal seeing the past, Tikal is also seeing the future. It seems. It seems like it. Yes. Like you know, it's it, this this jaw beast is showing. Hey, here's the here's the whole line. You know, you're gonna read all the chapters whether you like them or not. <laughs> yep. Uh, you know, and it it talks about how, um, even even to call has you know done this many times. Uh, uh, at least seventy years old. Um, I'm curious if there's still that's like the the one entry um talked about how like I won't be in this form or you know we never keep this right. form or whatever. So I'm I I doubt there's still this like bipedal squid tentacle thing <laughs> with one arm reaching out. That's still freaky as hell. Um, but yeah, it, it you know it, this this vision that uh, to call a scene is showing is essentially the end of their life. Like this, like yeah. The end is coming, and I, you know, obviously from the first reading we did tonight, we know that that was by the hand of the hive. So. You know, to to a being that's never that you know they go up there, they have these visions, and you know everything's uh, presumably been kind of like hunky dory. Like, hey, you're gonna you're gonna build a city over here, you're gonna build a, a, a town over there, and then eventually they'll connect together, and you'll you know connect. It it also shows like the advancements of of this civilization too. Like, you know, it grows into city into villages, vid- villages into cities uh, that then connect the 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 mountain to the sea, and then you know. Um, reach high to see bodies in the sky. So, I mean, this is a very advanced civilization too, that is still very much rooted in this culture here of, of this, uh, you know, give your limbs up to this, this symbiotic relationship between themselves and this jobby. So, um, yeah, but then to, you know, to see, to see the end, the end times, like, cool. What do you do with that information? <laughs> right. Like, you know, it's coming, but uh, now what? <laughs> Because <laughs> that's and again, like that's even with um, you know the Oxa machine and and you know whatever Lakshmi was using, whether it be a similar version of the Ox machine or you know a byproduct or or the Ox machine, whatever. Um, all these future visioning things all have the same thing in common. They show you the future, but it's still it, there's no exact like. It doesn't show you, hey, you know, tomorrow you're going to eat a bagel, and then after you get that bagel, you're going to get sick because the the bread wasn't made all the way, or they it, it had a bug in it or something. Like all it shows is like, hey, you're in the hospital, and there's bagel crumbs on the floor. So you're like, hey, oh my god, like what do you what do you infer from that? What do you what do you try to put together from that information? Like even I'm 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 being reminded of the the submachine gun frame. Uh, that was that was the Lakshmi one where she was shown all these different things of like, you know, an elixir standing across a, a tops a burning corpse in the city. Well, yeah, because you Lakshmi opened the doors and Vex poured through and killed a bunch of people, and the elixir are help or the the elixir are helping us. Like, they just so happen to be walking through an area where there's dead bodies. Like, you weren't shown the complete vision of everything. You saw what you wanted to see, took what you wanted to take from that, and said, "I'm going to use this information. However, I'm going to use it," and that's. Again, that's still kind of the problem with the – that's the ultimate problem with any type of future uh, showing devices is taken out of context. The whole thing is just can, – can, it, it can go to shit real quick. Yes. So, yeah. So, it's it's interesting that, that um, these – these this people, the, the, the Kogu – quote, Kogu – Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> this race uh, is uh, actively using this uh, and and you know being guided by this. It seems, uh, and then again at the end here, for one to be shown, hey, this is it. This is the end. You're all gonna die. Like, yeah. Fuck. What do you do with that? Yeah. Uh, like, and and like you said, it, it, there's no. There's no exact info. There's no like, okay, these are the signs to look for, or you should prepare, you know, is the end a military end? I mean, we kind of know it is, but to them it's like, okay, is the end military militaristic invasion? Is the end like some great plague? Is the end so, like, what are we preparing for? Uh, yeah. So yeah. Like, what do you do with that? Uh, well, Say, if we continue here, we can see what Taequal's next actions are. Taequal sinks to the floor before stretching main tendrils stabilize them. 
A steady line of blood flows from one freshly nubbed tendril, one of fifteen missing from Taequal's mane. The bloodied nub spasms with pain. Musical percussion vibrates through their limbs and plants them back into the present, in time to hear a voice address them. Awaken, Warden Taequal. With the knowledge of our forebears and trust to you, the set armada's command is now held to the Tay line. Three Kyugu elders wrapped in pearlescent second skin sleeves stand before Taequal, a golden crowned sleeve suspended above them, the golden mantle, a will weaver to meld disparate intentions into unity. Rise and accept this burden of service. A massive jaw beast bubbles with nectar, the taste of it still fresh, its shell bloodied. Providence fills Taequal's heart. The hum of space flight vibrates in rhythm with the pulse of pain in their mane. This ship, their command, to stand against what is coming. The line of Tay accepts. Taequal stands, raising their main tendrils as the golden crown sleeve lowers over them and enwraps their form. Data and feeling pour into perception, into control. Taequal feels dozens of ships taut at their command, like bladed waves cresting in the wind of Taequal's voice. In service. For set. We're going to pause briefly there. Yeah. I mean, the, the only thing to take away from this is, well, not the only thing, but the main thing is like, yeah, there's still cephalopods on bipedal things. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> there's, evolution doesn't uh, necessarily change everything. Hey, if you're already in the form that you need it, to exist yeah. and survive, like... If it, it if it works, nature's way of saying like, yeah, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, and then of course they, they do have this other second skin similar to, uh, uh, I, I think of it as like the pressure suits that yeah. the cabal wear. Yeah, I, I do too. Like some, some kind of space fairing suit. But it definitely, suit. it definitely has some sort of, like they talk about data and feeling pouring into, into perception, into control and they could feel the ships at their command. So there's, there's definitely some type of psychic link there that's happening. Yeah. It, perhaps via this suit, but there, there is, sure. yeah, there's definitely some kind of like. I do like that Will Weaver term. Yeah. That's kind of cool. <laughs> that's, that's, that seems, that seems pretty apt. But it looks like through some means, uh, Taequal was, I guess, kind of chosen to be the leader of these people in this time of crisis. Uh, the, the entire armadas. Like, yeah. It says the set armadas command is now held to the Tay line. Like, that's their planet. That's their armada. Like, that's everything. Yeah. That every, every ship in this sector is yours now. Command it. Which is kind of nutty. <laughs> Dude, he's, I mean, for a 70-year-old, he's he's kicking some ass yeah he's he's doing he's he's doing shits uh but so they accept that burden of command uh they have now the entire fleet at their proverbial fingertips uh and there's a little bit of a there's like you know the ellipsis the the gap in time um is assumed here uh as it continues take wall hangs suspended in their command sleeve, aboard their flagship, two years wiser, having learned to guide the fleet's movements like amorphous ripples across magnetic fields. Now, Taequal and their captains react as one. Tendrils twist within sleeve and draw the fleet together. Fifty-three of the Armada's finest, far-reaching war pearls drift into formation. Their sleek, horizontal teardrop shapes rendering them nearly invisible against the surrounding space. Progress? 
the request awaits an answer. The Sehun Gate is ready to send the fleet, Warden. The voice resonates in Taekwal's mind from the right flank of their fleet. Captain Jagana. There is no response from Sehun receiving. The Kyugu system of Sehun had fallen silent. There was fear. Taekwal speaks to the fleet. We do not jump in blindness. Our ancestors guide this fleet. We will see what has caused silence in the system of Seyun and return them into concert with the Kyugu. Forward. The fleet slips from Taekwal's awareness ship by ship into the folded space between points and out again until finally the flagship follows them through to the far-off star. And there, upon the exodus, the fleet is met with a great yawning tear of nothing. It spans ten times the width of their numbers. Taekwal's eyes catch something within the void, a gulf that in its deepest reaches burns with jade flame. An omen to swallow them all. Taekwal tenses, and the fleet, feeling the apprehension, halts. Taekwal listens, and the fleet boosts sensors, sending scans deep into the black. Those that probe the tear return no information. The gate behind them cools. J. Ghana. Peluma. Taekwal draws the captains into shared concert. It is empty, Jagana states flatly. What is it? A gate? I cannot locate any planetary signal, nor arc ship, nor groves. Peluma's concern strains the connection. I have seen. This is a doom we must avert. Taekwal is firm grounding the connection. Paluma, go to Setaun. The elder of their grove will... The tear shudders, sending a shockwave through the fleet, hundreds of small objects surging forth from the tear, like sparks spitting from sharpened steel. Their trajectories appear random and inelegant until a massive vessel a graven spinal corridor of obsidian and jade flame breaches the tear. As it crashes into the open space before Taekwal, the sparks react and scream forward towards the Kyugu ships. Taekwal scatters the private concert and relays alerts to the fleet. Battle stations. And we'll pause there. Uh, so yeah, uh, several things to kind of pick out from this, or at least things that I want to kind of poke at. Um, the first one being this, this idea of this concert, like it, yeah. it, this is, this is screaming darkness energy here. I mean, this is, this is again, that choral, you know, conductor, this is screaming darkness here, man. This is just, 100%. they are clearly using some sort of darkness um fueled power uh again if, if you want to think of it in in terms of like we use darkness to to access stasis or strand they are using darkness to access this communication system uh this again very much a psychic communication here that's happening um and then the the space in front of them like obviously the entire omen is happening like the, it's it's now like this is it so hey guess what you had two years sucks to suck bro <laughs> uh but then to see this as just a void, I'm I'm thinking of this in in two ways. One is something that I was thinking this whole time until I really kind of sat here and thought about it until the very end. The idea that like the armies of the witness, um, one of the armies being the hive, as they're just marching through the universe, they are literally like deleting the universe, like the universe behind them. 
doesn't exist anymore. And so that's why they call it the deep is it it's it's truly a space that doesn't exist. The more apt thing that I'm thinking of here, it being a a tear style breach is a tear between the ascendant plane and our plane. That's right. that's where my head's at. I think that second one is more apt here, and then of course all the all the little needles and points and shit flying out at random, like obviously high vessels, and then yep. one giant one. Clearly, a, the the I'm I'm assuming this is post um, Oryx learning to take, which would mean that that giant one is Akka. That is the dreadnought. Yeah, I'd have to look back at the Book of Sorrow to see where no, that no, chapter it, it can't is. Be because this is the fleet that overtakes them is not Oryx's. Oryx comes up and, and screws right, with the, right, right, the right. flank. Yep. So this is either I can't remember, is this Sabathun's or is this Yes, it it was. Because he, he like he like punished the Sabbath. So yep. this is Sabathun's fleet that's overtaking this. Yeah. So not Akka, not the Dreadnought, but Sabathun's. Oh my god, is that like her? Is her that warship that she has planted above Mars right now? That how we access her throne world is that has that always been her warship? Uh, it's just now all like I mean, pretty fied. It's all lucified. Yeah, I I don't know that we know, but presumably. So presumably, that's the ship that just broke through. This this deal that that like circular looking ship has just broken through this this plane of existence into into. Um, Go, go I keep wanting to say Goku space. <laughs> God damn Kugu. it, Dragon Ball. Yeah. Kugu, uh, Kugu space. So it describes the ship as a graven spinal corridor of obsidian and jade flame. So corridor to me sounds like a straight down. You know, right, like a hallway yeah. or something like that. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. which could be used to describe the dreadnought. Uh but we also uh it I think it was Sabathun and perhaps Shivu that both took this, uh, that both conquered oh, them. Like they t- they took it as a as like they they came and then Oryx came behind him and was like, "Haha, got your right side." Yeah, let me let me see. Go back to the um, book of sorrow here. Absolute shit. We literally just read it. And <laughs> yeah, you know. I'm, I'm just I'm so enthralled in this. Again, you know me. As soon as like a, a big old fight breaks out, like I'm in that moment. Now. Yeah, like I. Whatever moment existed before doesn't exist. That all the military instincts take over me, and I'm like, "All right, battle time!" Like, cool. Shut everything else out. This is what's happening. <laughs> no, it it just says Savathun and her broods have liberated the Kugu from existence. So, uh, whatever this is, this is all Savathun. Yep. Okay. Cool. Uh, so yeah. So uh, battle stations. Red alert. Yeah. Yeah. Things things are going down. I. Uh, so yeah, uh, Tequal makes this command for battle stations, and then the sleek hull plates of the Kugu War Pearls part to release dozens of drones. Weapons, shielding, utility, they flock around each ship and form into tight-knit squadrons. Kugu fusion batteries charge and rip into the incoming swarm, disintegrating swaths of chitinous ships before the attackers close in. Tequal contorts sleeved tendrils and directs the fleet into cloud formation. Each captain's subcommand and drones a murmuration within the greater armada, united in fluid motion. They draw the tiny, bladed ships into crossfires and reduce them to ashes. Tequal turns the fleet's attention to the tear and the ship in front of it. Suddenly, dozens of obsidian vessels burst forth from the tear. Sheets of tiny rippers dislodge from the larger vessels and cut across the space towards the Kugu fleet, supported by salvos of Axian volleys. Kugu fusion fuselages cull hundreds of tiny blades from the surge of approaching ships, but it is not enough to punch clear holes and target their supporting artillery. Tequal tries to guide the fleet through an upward arc over the incoming swarm, dodging heavy ordnance and tiny chitinous blades that peck at their flanks through torrents of retaliation. Terror, pain, and silence radiate through. One of the fleet is snuffed out. 
Taequal tightens their ranks against the bladed swarm and attempts to redirect fire to the larger ships, but their numbers are quickly beginning to pale to those of the invaders. They watch doom pour from the omen. Another wave of rippling blades blitz through the tear. The invasive surge overwhelms their armaments. Taequal detaches Paluma to spool the gate home, then adjust ta tactics. They draw drones in close to chain power between ships. They inhale, and fusion energy flows through the fleet into one unified beam that scatters the swarm of blades and splits two obsidian ships, and then another, and another. Shields fail across the fleet. Hope, hopelessness, extinguishment radiate through. Taequal feels Paluma slip away as their ship is overtaken by a thousand blades, but the gate is now ready. They would need the full might of the Kyugu to stand against this horror. Retreat sounds across the fleet. Seyun has fallen, and they flee through the swarm, leaving wreckage and fire. And that's the end of chapter one. I mean, this this is just a pure case of overwhelming numbers. Like, yeah, this the, the the hive have blitzkrieg tactics. Like they they don't they they will just send billions upon billions upon billions of of entities, whether it be individual ships or knights or thrall, whatever. Just hurl as much shit at the enemy as you can until they're just overwhelmed by sheer numbers. Like this, this is, and and clearly, clearly the 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 co God damn it, the the Q -Gu, I will get this right eventually, <laughs> Myth. I don't know when, but I will get this right eventually. The Q -Gu, uh weren't prepared at all. I mean, they had what, like fifty something ships? I think they said. Yeah, like it, they were not so expecting had, this kind of resistance. This level of of. I mean, they weren't expecting anything. They didn't know what to expect. True. So yeah. To to have fifty out there is one thing, and clearly lost a good chunk of it. Like, I would say, I would say two thirds of their fifty some odd ships are gone. Yeah. Obliterated. Um, but you know they 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 get the retreat and they they're like, okay, we're gonna need more firepower. Um. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> let me let me let me know how that turns out for you. Um, spoiler alert: it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, the first great battle of the um, the Kyugu War. <laughs> the Kyugu War, yeah, the Kyugu decimation. I'm right? Not yeah, this was not a war. This is a de like they got decimated here, like. The, the the fact that this so this is a whole section of their system right so if we think of this like each star is its own sector the entirety of one star system is now wiped out it's gone yep. it's taken like sorry not taken because i can't use that term here because that means something else in terms of hive uh but seyun has fallen like that whole system is gone yeah and so now they're down to essentially three-fourths of of their remaining fleet and and it doesn't seem at least from the telling of this it doesn't seem like the other side has even taken a a, a pecking of of a of a downfall like they're just like yeah cool one down three to go yeah like and you know we know we know the hive the numbers they have the the yeah. uncaringness they will show for you know their own losses uh yep. so i mean on one hand there's like that moment of hope where they you know, are like redirect, you know, that, that moment of like redirect energy away from the shields to the, the la the forward laser. Uh, yep. and they're able to take out two of these like big obsidian ships, but well, it I would doesn't to be, matter. Are, are we, are we thinking these obsidian ships are like war moons? Uh, I don't, I don't know. We've never seen a war moon, I guess. Uh, that's, I mean, that's the big thing is like, when we when I think of the Hive fleet, like we know in the beginning, that's what they did. They took over literal moons and turned them into literal vessels of destruction, yeah. like giant ships. And so I'm curious if they just tore through like a moon or two 
and was like, shit, that didn't do anything. <laughs> now what? Like, we just unleashed our greatest attack, and there are still many, many, many more of them. What do we do? Yeah, I I hesitate to think these are war moons just because, again, they're described as those, like, obsidian corridors. And sure. I feel like if a... I, I, we don't necessarily have a, a scale of reference, but I feel like if a moon sized thing <laughs> came through that portal, it would have been described more as a like small planet than that's, that's no moon. That's a space station. <laughs> uh, I couldn't help myself on that one. That was too on point. You know what? That's probably the inspiration for hive war moons in the first place. I'm telling you, man, you tell me it's not and I'll call you a liar. Like clearly those are just death stars. Just a whole bunch of little Death Stars. That's that's, that's what we're fighting against with the Hive. That's all. That's all. Every everything comes back to like Star Wars. Everything is either Star Wars or Star Trek. One of the two. <laughs> uh, but so that finishes off the first chapter of the Dynasty book, and I this is where a decision is to be made, and I I think perhaps we cut this one a tad short, uh, and can. You're going to leave everyone on a cliffhanger? Yep. <laughs> You're going to do that to these people? Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm okay with it. This, these entries are long. Like, the, I don't, I'm with you on this. Like, I don't, I'm looking at time here. Like, we could probably push through the one, but then, like, the next episode is going to be, like, 20 minutes. So, like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm yeah. okay cutting it. I, I, think, I think it's going to be, and it's a lot to digest as well. So, I think it's going to be easier to end part one here, and we'll continue the next two chapters in part two of the next episode. Yeah. So yeah, cliffhanger hanging on a cliff. Yeah, as if we don't know what happens to them. Like, <laughs> I mean, we already told everyone what happened with the first entry. Like, spoiler alert, they all die. But there's still neat things happening in here. <laughs> there are still lessons to be learned. That's, that's, again, thinking of it in terms of history. There are still lessons to be learned from this. Like, yes, this entire civilization was wiped out. Like, it doesn't exist anymore. But there's... There are lessons to be learned in here. So, like again, I, this story is a very fun one. I, I, I say fun as, you know, a third of their or a fourth of their existence just got wiped out. Yeah, that's yeah. totally fun. It's 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 a it's a it's neat to look into these insights to, to see this this history unfold here. So, yeah, it is. All right. Well, let's do uh, let's do some shout outs then. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a couple shout outs. We still have. Uh, a, a ever growing uh, backlog because people keep keep sending stuff and and saying things and I like it. It's great. Uh, so I say we we still have a few after these, but we're gonna stick to just a couple this time around. Uh, first one coming to us from Twitter uh, from Tyson, who says, uh, "You two are awesome. Uh, thank you." I'm a returning player. Straight to the point. <laughs> yeah, like it. Uh, that, that's it. No. <laughs> uh, I'm a returning player and had no clue what had transpired for the last five years in Destiny 2. Holy uh, shit. That's a gap. Yeah. That's a, I mean, hey, I get it. a lot to catch up on. Yeah. Uh, you have not just made the game more than the gem it was, but also reminded me of what a great community this game has. So thank you to Bob. Steve and <laughs> fucking told <Toland. laughs> all the random shit I make up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. I, I love, I love that we're able to, to provide more insight. And I, th- this, this is a common thing that we've been getting lately is that people are seeing more in this game than, than, than what's even at the surface level. Mm-hmm. And that's, I love seeing that depth there. That's, uh, there's so many stories in destiny and there's so many things that are constantly happening in the background that aren't that aren't forefront that aren't part of like the main deal and again those are the things that make this world feel alive and that's what really truly keeps me coming back to destiny yeah i and you know five five years uh is a a there's a lot of stuff that's happened because i think that's forsaken is i mean that's yeah 2019 yeah for forsaken beyond light so forsaken into we go forsaken beyond light no shadow keep. shadow keep. i always forget yeah. shadow keep was before beyond light yep. because yep. and i have to remind myself like no at the end of shadow keep or at some point in time in the shadow keep campaign i think it was towards the end it was when eris was like touched the statue and it like rippled yep. with stasis and that was like the beginning of the idea of stasis so yeah so 
Shadow, so Forsaken, Shadow Keep, Beyond Light, Witch Queen, Final Shape, or uh, Lightfall. There's five years right there. Yep. And then Final Shape would be six. So yeah, that's a that's a that's a big jump. There's a lot there to to digest. Yeah. I uh, so hopefully, and it sounds like we have, we've been able to fill some of those gaps for you because there's been some really awesome stuff. Uh, and not all of it is available in game anymore, which. You know, Pers- kind of personally i think is is i uh, i would love to see change in the future but they got other things on their plate at the moment uh yeah. but yeah so if we can fill that gap in the meantime i'm happy that we can help bring some more enjoyment to the game absolutely uh the next one here comes to us from uh spotify spotify now has comments which is great and we've had a couple people using it uh so this one comes to us from matthew who says uh, you guys are freaking amazing. Uh, if you have a passion for making content, please continue to make stuff. Uh, thank you, Myth and Zor, for the kind words about the devs and for making the game more fun and accessible. Because of the stories you share with your community, uh, if you ever wanted to start a Patreon, I think that'd be an amazing <laughs> move. Uh, if you want any more incentive to keep going, uh, I'm sure people here would be more than happy to support at least a little bit. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad that, again, that you, you were able to, to get more out of the game for, uh, for our small part in its telling. Uh, in regards to the Patreon stuff, because you're not the first person to ask or, or suggest uh, things like that. Uh, we've, we've talked about it before. Uh, where we're at at the moment is, is still kind of the same place we were at uh, last time we, we had a comment like this come up. Uh, at right now, we have a certain degree of freedom and, uh, it, it, it's a passion project, you know, it, it, as soon as we start attaching a monetary value to it, it becomes a job, uh, which might not be all bad. Sure. But what also comes with that is a, Expectation. Yes. Uh, it, it is this guidelines and it, it, it and turns deadlines. into, yeah, it turns into a like less about like, Hey, we're excited about recording and we have stuff we want to record. And it turns more into a, okay, we need to record because people are literally paying for this. It, it's no longer a, uh, you know, a, a community in the same way. It's now in, you know, it feels like to us more of a, like, we are providing a good that is being purchased, and that is a very different yeah. relation relationship. Uh, yeah. So I, I 100% appreciate the thought of like wanting to support us, and I think that you know the 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 fact you are even suggesting it is you know means the world to me that you think that that highly of the show. Uh, but for the moment, we're we're gonna stay uh, we're gonna stay free. I uh, free for you guys to access and also, you know, free for us to create or, you know, uh, not as we see fit. Yeah. And I mean, if you want to give us money, <laughs> I'm not going to say no. Uh, Please make checks payable. Uh, no, yeah. no, no, we're not doing, no, no, <laughs> no, uh, no, it's, it's very like myth and I poke at that idea every once in a while. And, and like, we keep coming back to the idea. Like we do this for fun. Like this is, this is everything we do here. Like, you know, like it, it's very much, I, I look forward to recording uh, and even even this week, like I've I've had tons of issue happening with my with my my fur babies the last couple of weeks. Um, uh, you know, one one had to have a bunch of tooth taken out. Another one broke his foot. He's sitting underneath me right now with his cast. And then uh, that was Aldrin. And then Saint, he started having seizures again and started having some bad ones again. So it's like it, it, today was was a rough time of of like fuck, man, shit is happening but I still want to record. Like I'm still, I still feel the urge to record. I still wanted to get on here and record. And so like it, it's again, to have that level of passion, to have that level of like, I want to do this feels good. Like what Miss was saying, as soon as you attach that monetary value to it, like shit, like now I, now I have to get on. Now I have to record. And then it doesn't, it doesn't have the same like passion behind it. I don't feel like, I mean, it can, it can, there's certainly tons of, of people that like 
absolutely love what they're doing. Myth and I just aren't at that point yet. Uh, and I say yet, because, I mean, someday it may turn into something bigger. Like, I don't know. Like, we've been going for, what, two years now? Almost three years now? Yeah. So, I mean, it like, again, like, it, we love doing this. We love getting on. We love shooting the shit here. We love, you know, trading stories and coming up with theories and ideas and stuff. And, and like, uh, in reference to the, the, the kind words about the devs and stuff, we know that that was a hard time. Like that week, like it really did like take the wind out of our sails. And myth and I, w- like if this was a, a job, we couldn't just be like, well, we're taking off for a week. Cause then, you know, like in this realm, you don't get paid. Like, <laughs> yeah. like that's, that, and then it becomes an issue. Like now I can't buy food. <laughs> like, so again, like it's the fact that this is still a passion project right now. And, and we really enjoyed treating it that way. I, I, I think we're good for now. Like, again, thank you. Like I, I love that so many people are like, "Hey, start a Patreon. I want to give you money." Like, that's I've never had somebody actively be like, "Here, I want to give you money." Yeah, <laughs> just exist, and I'm like, "Okay, neat." Uh, but thank you, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so another one we've got here from the Spotify's um, comes to us from Beecher, uh, is their username at least. Uh, it says, "Thanks so much." For being the best Destiny 2 podcast ever. That is a That's high a bar. Big, holy <laughs> There's shit. There's a lot of people out in this game, but thank you for thinking so. Uh, you guys make my day so much better with your amazing stories and lore about my favorite game. Uh, I hope you guys keep doing what you're doing and continue making content no matter what. Thanks so much for being amazing people. 100 out of 10. I uh, <laughs> Parentheses. You guys can use my name. Uh, I, lo- I love that people are actually letting us know if we can use it. We, we weren't really sure in the beginning, but we also wanted to let people know, like, hey, we see you. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I, any type of acknowledgement, it, 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 even the, the, a small, minute thing in a podcast at the very end, like, hey, I see you. Thank you. Like, that, a lot, that, that brings a lot of joy to people. And uh, Myth and I are all, all about, like, bringing happiness to this world. Like, the world sucks as much as it already does right now. I don't want to make it worse. Like, right. <laughs> I just I just want people to smile and and to 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 just acknowledge people is is a is a huge thing, and so yeah like when you acknowledge us we're gonna acknowledge you right back yep so yeah yeah thank you uh, we really appreciate and I, I yeah absolutely thank you very much that is very high praise because uh, there are a lot of other best Destiny two podcasts ever. Uh, right I, I can't live up to that that's a hard one there there are a, a few shows out there I don't know if how many are lore centric. Um, but there are definitely some Destiny shows out there that are are well worth listening to. I, uh, but uh, but no, the um, <laughs> the also the the name thing. Just as a, a general rule of thumb, just so people are aware, typically what I will do is if you have posted something in a public space, uh, so like Twitter or you know, in this case, uh, the Spotify comments, like those are, are publicly visible. So I figure if you're comfortable having a username or something there, um, then you're probably comfortable with us saying it because it's already available for everybody. Uh, if you contact us in some private method, uh, pretty much Gmail, uh, if you send us like an email message, uh, I will not use your information unless you specifically say like hey you can say my username it's whatever or you know something along those lines uh or if you're like our one of our last shout outs last week that like they 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 had a name yeah and they had a fire team name like i still haven't come up with a the the fire team name or or a name for my ghost i know that that was that was cool that was very cool. That's really cool. I I love the shit like that. That that shit is like the icing on the cake. That's like the high level like yeah. Yeah. I love it. That is when you are in it. You are feeling the game and I love when you can get that immersed in something. So but I uh, if you like what you heard here and you want to support us in some way even though we don't have a Patreon, I uh, best thing you can do is leave a review on your platform of choice. Uh, leave a comment if you're so inclined, be it Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Uh, tell a friend that you think might be interested in, in what we're doing. Uh, and uh, you can reach out uh, Twitter at Myths and Stories, uh, YouTube.com slash at Myths and Stories, uh, Myths and Stories at gmail.com. And you may see yourself as a future shout out. Yeah. Um, 
My my thank you is going to be more. I, I I'm going to do a little personal thank you today. Um, thank you to all the all the, any veterinary tech or or anyone who works in the in the veterinary space. Um, we come to you with all sorts of like crazy problems and expect you to just like miracle fix it. Uh, and like we know in our hearts, like that's not how that shit works. But yeah, like it's a it's a hard space to work in. Like we love our fur babies a lot. And we know we, we, we have a high level of like expectation when we, when we bring them to you with like, Oh my God, what maybe make it better, make it do. Uh, and I don't think you guys get enough praise. So thank you to anyone who works in the, uh, veterinary space, uh, whether it be, you know, the, the, the guy or gal up at the front desk, just checking people in, uh, the techs in the back, they're just like helping hold, uh, uh, fur babies while they get their shots or, or have to get, you know, some type of surgery all the way, all the way, all the way through the whole spectrum, all the way to the guys that, you know, are, are doing the surgery and, you know, having to, having to get in there and, and do the hard, the hard, hard work. Um, so yeah, thank you, all of you. Uh, it means a lot to us that, that you guys exist and, and have that same level of care for, for these little guys as we do. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know that was like kind of random, but that's, no. again, this whole week has been very animal centric to me, at least. It's just been, I feel like there's a curse on this house right now, myth. I just, I mean, from rolling all ones in D&D <laughs> left and right and missing every single attack to like every fur baby. Like we have, we have lots of fur babies in this household. So like we're the two of my wife and I are both just like, Oh my God, who's next? Like, Oh my God, we're in total panic mode of like, what's going to happen next. And it's just, it's, it's, it can be very overwhelming sometimes. So yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, well, that's enough rambling for me. Uh, myth, you got, uh, you got anything else? That's it. All righty. Well then from all of us, Lord daddies to all of you guardians out there, we'll see you next time. You found your people. Guardians do love their myths and stories.